Welcome to Modest and Styles first ever podcast. Today we'll be discussing one of our favorite topics, fashion. Specifically, the historic movement of Edwardian fashion in the early 1900s. The Edwardian era, also recognized as the Gilded Age, was a time of prosperity. From 1900 to about the time leading up to the First World War, people experienced major change throughout the world. Despite the available documentation of this time, it's been best represented through movies and TV shows like Downton Abbey, Titanic, and more. Most recently, HBO has released a drama series featuring this time period. It's been appropriately titled as The Gilded Age, and has greatly influenced my personal interest in historical fashion. Some of the most dazzling outfits I've ever seen have been produced for this show, and it made me wonder what else I had been missing. Our understanding of the past is limited, even with the growth of technological advancements. There's a lot we don't know about the fine intricacies of history, but photography and preserved articles have granted us a closer look to what might have been. One of the most important factors of fashion during this time, for women at least, was lingerie. Now, I'm sure this isn't the topic you were all hoping to consider. I completely understand that. But it played an interesting role in the style and appearance of Edwardian dress and grooming. I've always noted the shape of women's dresses throughout history. For a decent amount of time, it was the bigger, the better. But fashion in the early 1900s changed that. The style of women's dressing was modernized, yet it still kept to its famously feminine shape by using corsets and whatnot. However, what I didn't know is what else really went into getting ready during this time. Apparently, the outfits then were more intricate than they looked, and it all started with underwear. Though, unlike today, it wasn't as simple as putting on a bra or a pair of shorts. People back then really had to take their time getting dressed for the day. According to a detailed blog post from the fashion archaeologist, there were several layers involved in creating the perfectly shaped Edwardian dresses. Some items we are more familiar with, like the corset, but it was accompanied, or sandwiched, rather, between other important articles of clothing that helped to provide a certain look, and also protected the skin and modesty of the person wearing said item. Now, before reading this blog post, I had no idea that people really wore these kinds of clothing. In a way, the fashion of past decades, and centuries even, seem unrealistic. Today's fashion isn't as complex or artfully crafted as history has shown us. Really, what I'm trying to express is that clothing today is much less performative than that of the Edwardian era and prior to it. Consider this. It's early in the morning and you have somewhere to be. All you have to do is get ready for the day. It should be easy, right? Perhaps for some, but for women in the 1900s, it was a true task. First, a woman would put on a chemise, her first undergarment of many. It would serve as a barrier between her skin and her corset. But before she could put that on, she needed her stockings. Otherwise, she'd have a hard time pulling them up. That is, unless she was rich or able to afford a lady's maid to help her dress. Then finally, after that was all said and done, she'd put on her cassette. Placed over top of the corset would be a corset cover and drawers, or as some of the more modern women chose to wear, a combination of both, though the alternative was typically worn for formal or more active wear. Either way, I'd likely be overheating by this point. Nearly four or more layers of clothing, and they still weren't considered to be dressed yet. The last two items a woman would wear beneath her dress is actually one of my favorites. It's not uncommon to see in today's fashion, but it's usually reserved for more formal wear, like a ball gown or wedding dress. The petticoat is what fills out the shape of a dress. Many women wore more than one, some in various shapes and sizes, that would enhance their daily wardrobe. Speaking of daily wardrobe, women during this period actually wore several different outfits during the day. This was something I also noted in many shows like Downton Abbey and The Gilded Age, though I assumed it was just a quirk. In the morning, clothes would be loosely fitted, usually featuring a simple blouse and skirt. By noon, the style would change slightly to better accompany the events of the day. They'd refer to it as the S silhouette, 
which takes after its predecessor in the Victorian era. And for the evening, a tea gown would be worn till the end of the night. An interesting fact about this dress, it didn't require a corset like the majority, making it a much more comfortable option for a night in. Who would have thought that so much went into being an Edwardian woman? As beautiful as the fashion of that time was, I don't think I could have possibly survived. Though I do wonder what else it may have inspired in today's fashion. It seems many styles are coming back around. Until next time. Thank you for listening.